Hello, hello. We've got Louise here with us for a little member highlight video. So thanks so much for coming, Louise, and answering these questions or coming virtually <laughs> to us through the screen. Um, so when did you start training at Functional Fitness? How long have you been here? I've been attending Function for just about eight years now. Super cool. So you were one of the OGs, the originals way back. Well, no, Trevor was already in his new building by then. <laughs> My husband was one of the old ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. So what made you start coming to functional fitness? Why, why'd you walk through our doors? Well, Blair had been attending function for a few years prior to my joining, and I was seeing some of the benefits that he was experiencing, but because of some past history, it was like I wasn't totally on board yet at that point, but the fall before I joined, I was harvesting apples, and I was up in a tree, and I got stuck in the tree. My foot got wedged. I didn't have my cell phone with me and Blair wasn't home and I could not lift myself out of that notch and I was wedged in there and I spent a half an hour suspended in an apple tree realizing uh, at that during those 30 minutes or so in the tree that I can't move and part of the reason I can't move is I don't have the strength to help myself. And that was an awakening for me because I'm an avid gardener and I realized I'm not getting any younger. My body's going to start changing here. And I think it's talking to me. And that was the motivation was being stuck for a half an hour and not being able to help myself. So, yeah, so with much effort and kind of hurting another body part because I needed to get out. Um, I was able to eventually figure out how to do it. But that was the motivation that got me to start exploring exercising at function. Wow, that's awesome. I had never heard that story before. That's crazy that you were stuck in a tree for half an hour. Oh my gosh. I guess that would motivate a person. <laughs> yep, yep, it did. Holy cow. So we kind of already touched on this a little bit, but the struggles that you were having before functional fitness, um, yeah. mainly just the lack of strength or were there some other things that were going on? Well, it was a, it was a few things. It was strength and mobility was a big one for me. Um, and realizing, you know, I've been a nurse for 45 years and in taking care of people, I would see deterioration in people's physical wellness and their inability to help themselves when they were really sick. Um, and that became another motivator for me. And then the other thing that I, it's one of these deep seated kind of things is I come with a history of having been imprinted with the image of, I'm a big girl. From little on, I heard that said to me many, many times. Um, and it started becoming a part of who I was on the inside. And I didn't deal with obesity issues, but I've always had a big girl image and it wasn't positive. Mm -hmm. uh, I would hear comments like, oh, look at your thighs. Well, I was a dairy girl. I grew up on a farm. I did a lot of hard physical labor. Um, I was very strong as a kid but I also was the biggest and tallest girl in my class until I was a freshman in high school. So those images always fed into who I was. So whenever I thought of going to a gym for wellness, the big girl would talk and I would hear things like, you're never gonna be small, Louise, don't even try. And so I was defeated before I even started anything. And so my approach to function was, I'm not going for weight loss because that was always part of my history. Um, it was, you need to be able to move. You need to be able to be strong enough to do the gardening things you wanna do. And now I've got grandsons. I need to be able to get down on the floor and up off the floor and I need to be able to run. So, 
so that that was a big motivator for me wow yeah that is a really good way of looking at it that's so amazing mm. it that's took awesome. a long time <laughs> yeah i'm sure that's so nice though that you were able to realize that this is something that you wanted to do not even for the weight loss just for mm -hmm. other aspects of your life just to make moving around easier right right and, and getting out of apple trees easier <laughs> <laughs> and and one of the things i i was i've been very intentional about when i started at function was to not even talk about weight yeah because that's always been a stumbling block for me whether i weighed the right amount or whether I was overweight, I've never been underweight. So I just couldn't go there. That was not going to be my focus. It's become a benefit, but that's a sideline benefit. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So, so kind of going off of that, then mm -hmm. um, some changes that you've experienced since training at functional, um, from all aspects, what are some things that you've noticed that have changed? Okay. Well, when I first interviewed with Trevor, my very first initial visit with him, he said, is there anything about you that I should know about? And I said, yeah, I don't like to sweat. And he looked at me and he went, you're a gardener. And I went, that is the only legitimate reason to sweat is if you're outside working in the garden. That is my only reason. Otherwise, I don't want to sweat. And he goes, Okay, I'll see what I can do about that. <laughs> so he accommodated it pretty well in the beginning. I do sweat now. <laughs> yeah, we get after it a little bit now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So um, the biggest thing is, is I'm stronger. I am way more flexible. And I'm going to be hmm, 68 this winter. Wow. And my goal is to be able to lift apple crates and they're 50 to 60 pounds each. We manhandle approximately 3000 pounds of apples every fall. Um, I don't have a lot of day-to-day -day health issues unless I have an old hip thing that flares up. Um, but what I've benefited from is learning a lot of maintenance kinds of things and listening to my body sooner so that I'm able to do the stretching ahead of time, break up my routines more. And those were things that, you know, I'd, I'd put in 14, 16 hour days outside and I did the same thing all day and didn't take a break other than to drink water. So um, I think my approach to working is healthier as a result of it. And I definitely see myself now able Oh yeah. I, I can do it. Yeah. Of and, course. and I can feel, and I feel good about that. Yeah, so. for sure. Yep. Yeah. I yep. can do that. I see you in the gym and I'm like, out away, Louise, you go, you can, <laughs> you're, you get after it. Well, it, it's amazing though. You know, when we were, when we were meeting in the gym and I'd be in the semi-private section and I'd be watching team training, I could be intimidated by some of the things that I was watching people do over there. Mm -hmm. And I've had to teach myself to just put my blinders on. That is not me. I'm not doing that for a variety of reasons. Right. Do what you're supposed to do and do what you can do. Yeah. So, and focus yep. on doing that well and not compare mm -hmm. yourself to others. That can be a huge yep. thing in the gym that a lot of people struggle with. That's, that's right. Walking in the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yep. really awesome that you've done that. Um, so again, kind of tagging off, you, you just do so well with leading me into the next question that I'm supposed to ask. <laughs> but, so why do you feel like you've been successful with your changes and you've seen these changes and you've done well and you're killing it here at the gym? Why do you think you've been so successful? I do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> I obey. <laughs> I think that, I think the biggest thing is I come when I don't want to. Um, we have early morning appointments. I don't necessarily, I'm a night person. I, I really operate better as an owl. But if I 
just get up and do it and get that out of the way on my days that I'm scheduled to train, then I'm free to do everything else. And so show up, do it, and be honest when something isn't working. Um, in the beginning, I think that I kind of, if something started to trigger an ache and, or, or some pain, I had a tendency to try to push through that. I don't do that anymore. It's like, no, my body, listen to your body. I used to tell my kids all the time, listen to your body. It will talk to you. And it's, it's got its own language. So um, I, I just tune in more. But yeah. I think that that's, that's been a big success. So yeah, I think the honesty with yourself when things aren't working or when something doesn't mm -hmm. feel good, not only is really good for you to help develop that interaction with your body, but also as a coach, it is so nice when a client is honest about how things are feeling and what's feeling good and what's not feeling good. It's, I mean, some people just get caught up with the, yep, everything's good. We're going to keep pushing. And then we find out later that stuff was hurting and it yeah. really super, it just makes things, it makes the success come quicker because you're being honest and you're not just fighting through this pain and causing more problems later. Yep. yep. In the eight years, Alexis, since I've been coming to function, um, I can think of two times where after a session, I was sore, where it lingered for a couple days. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes mu certain muscles will have to be awakened through a new exercise, and I expect that. But I really, I feel like I'm challenged, but I've never been taxed. Right. And there hasn't been any injuries. So for that, I, I'm very pleased. Yeah, that's awesome. So now that you've seen the success, you've been here for a while, what makes you keep coming back year after year for all this time? You know, when I, when I knew that that question was going to be posed, I, I found myself immediately thinking of at least once a year, if not twice, Blair and I will have conversations about, okay, this is what we're spending to exercise, to have someone watch us exercise. Well, it's more than that. Um, is it worth it? Does this have this amount of dollar value? And both of us have said, yep. Because number one, we don't come with the skills to write our own programs. I don't know how to write complementary programs to all the different muscle groups that get worked. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and the other piece is, I need accountability. When I know I'm doing my, definitely doing two days a week, I am more inclined to add something during the week. These last six years as we've traveled, we didn't have the virtual option prior to this. And I see that as a huge benefit now for when we go back to traveling. Um, it's like, okay, I can't walk away from function. They're, they're going to be there. <laughs> and I have, it's not easy. I can't get rid of them. They're going to be <laughs> there. But, but it's, it's that accountability piece because for the last six years, we have, both of us have experienced it. We leave here. We've got a program. We leave with paper. We get to our camping destinations. We start out really good for the first two weeks. And then we start to justify, oh, we went for a walk today. And pretty soon it's like, oh, we just didn't have time. And by the end, by the time we come home, we're, we're back where we were when we left. We haven't made any progress. So um, I see it as a big benefit to, to be able to have access to virtual stuff when we travel and people anywhere can participate now. So, um, and, and I think the other piece too for us is, um, just having the, I'm trying to find my note here so that I make sure that I say this. Blair and I each year set up goals. We've, we've always written goals and we do business goals and marriage goals and community goals and then some personal things. And when we look at those, being healthy and being active and being able to do whatever we want as we get older, that's a goal for us. And so function helps us accomplish that. 
So I'm, I'm convinced it's working. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good. I'm glad to hear that it's working and you're seeing those benefits and you're enjoying your time as well here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. so. Lastly, um, before I let you go, if you could give some advice to either members that are a little newer, that are still getting comfortable or people that are hesitant to come into a gym, like functional fitness, Mm -hmm. what is some advice that you would tell them? Um, if you're just starting, keep coming, come when you don't want to, because once you get there, it's fine. Uh, for someone who's thinking about starting, it's like, that's the biggest, hardest decision. But once you commit to it, then it's, it's play after that. Right. Right. And it's a great way, you know, you get to meet new people. We've met a ton of new people. So yeah, that's a huge part of it too, is the social community mm-hmm. that you meet people that you probably wouldn't meet otherwise if they, that's weren't, right. they weren't both at the gym at the same time. That's right. And that whole, that whole intimidation thing with a gym, um, I think if people really seriously sit back and ask themselves, why is that so intimidating? They're going to find that there's some really more deep seated issues that have always haunted them. And it's like, just take, take the plunge, take the risk, but be patient with yourself. You know, I found myself wanting to be stronger, quicker, and it doesn't happen that way. It, you got to be patient with the process and then patient for results, but they come eventually. Yeah, that's some great advice. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> well, well, then I'll interview you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, honestly. <laughs> um, you're the expert here. <laughs> well, thanks for answering our questions, Louise. We so enjoy having you train here. And I think thanks. that's great info for future members to come. So good. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the gym. <laughs>